How many of you have flown a drone before? I see some hands. Okay, how many of you have crashed a drone before? Oh, I see some hands. And those who have crashed the drones before, we rock. So, I've been working with drones for the past eight years. Uh, my first drone was basically four motors, four propellers, some remote control. It took off. Two seconds later, it crashed. Genius, right? So, what I did, I went back to the drawing board. And this was eight years ago where hardware components were, were not readily available like today. So, I put accelerometer, gyroscope, some microcontrollers in, and I got it flying stable. But then, it was drifting left and right. It was pretty much a nightmare to see this thing flying. So I went back to the drawing board again. I put some additional sensors on it. Now I put barometer and GPS. So, uh, so what this drone does now, it knows where, is it fly where it is flying in the 3D space. It knows exactly where it is in an outdoor environment where GPS is available. So now, I have another question. So I've been making this, I've been building this for the past eight years. So take a rough guess, how many drones that I've crashed in the past eight years? Those with a close answer, I might give you a drone as a gift. So take a rough guess. All right, all right, all right. Okay, to be exact, almost 196 something. So none of you are right, none of you are wrong. So I have one extra drone with me. So um, the, first, f f the first four years of building drones, I was doing this as a hobby. It was not my full-time job. I was doing this uh, as a part of my college work. And uh, I also found out there was a market for aerial filming. Uh, so I, I built drone, I put in some cameras in, I go fly, I get paid. And I was doing this to pay my college fees and so on. And then there's this one day, uh, one of my ex-lecturer called, said, Hey David, I saw your Facebook post, you are building drones. I have a bunch of friends who work for the agriculture sector, they want to talk with you. So I went and met them. Here's what they told me. Hey David, um, can you build a drone that can carry liquid, and spray in our paddy field. This is exactly how I reacted. Are you guys serious? This was four years ago. So I went back. Um, I went back. I did my propulsion calculation. Uh, a week later, I told them, yes, I can do this. But it's going to be expensive. It's going to be risky. Let's take the shot. So now, we co-founded Dronology. Uh, with the intention of building agricultural UAV that carries uh, AI. The term AI here is agricultural input, consists of fertilizers, consists of uh, herbicide and pesticide. So the, the idea is you put these AIs in and they, they work on our paddy field. So why, why drones? People have been doing this for many, many years now, you know? So let me tell you how they do it right now, the traditional method. They have a backpack filled with 30 liters of AI. And these workers, they go on paddy field spraying the AI. Imagine walking in a paddy field where the temperature is close to 33 Celsius. And if you're lucky enough, you might be greeted by some snakes. So that, that's how dangerous it is right now. So the idea was we get drones who, do, who, who, can, who can basically go on field, work for us to make food. So what we did, we designed Natalie. Natalie, let me show you Natalie. So we designed Natalie to be fully auto autonomous. What do I mean by autonomous? Autonomous is where... Remote control, no longer needed. Remember I told you I've crashed so many drones? I went back to the drawing board to, to find out, to found out, I mean, where does the crash actually happen? What actually causing the crash? There's two factors. Number one is the hardware. 
Number two is humans. Hardware failure causes crashes. The second factor is when you put a controller to a man. So we designed Natalie from scratch to be fully autonomous. So what I'm about to show you is our first pr prototype uh, of Natalie. That, and it was actually our first flight in Paddy Field. So let's have a look. was in back 2015, November 2015. Natalie has a uh, capability of carrying 5 litre payload. Uh, during this time, we were working closely with one of, uh, one of the agency in Qatar. So the agency told us they're having problem with labour shortage. So we brought this, we brought Natalie there and we showed them, well, here's the solution. And we asked them, when can we start? They said, okay, you can start, but you have to spray 200 liter per hectare. What you saw just now, Natalie had only 5 liter payload capacity. That means for one hectare, you have to take off and land 40 times. Very not, not efficient, yeah? So I went back to the drawing board. Uh, I was thinking, how do I solve this, you know? Do I make drones that are capable of carrying 200 liters? Uh, it won't be drones anymore, it would be helicopters, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, while all these were, we were having brainstorm, I mean, we were brainstorming what we're going to do next, uh, we, the team from Dronology, we went to China. In China, uh, we got to know they are using drone for their paddy fields. So we went there for, to basically learn how they are doing it. So I went there, um, here's what I saw. Any one of you who watch footballs? Do you guys know what is linesman? Okay. So there's this, uh, the pilot, who's the main guy there, with the controller. At the end of the field, end of the paddy field, There'll be a linesman, probably 300 meters away. So this pilot, he will actually get the drone all the way to the end. The moment the drone reaches the end, the flagman will go, okay, you're at the end. And then they'll move five to 10 meters away and the pilot will actually bring back the drone and the process continues. So one drone, they required four people to work. The main idea of using drone for our paddy field was we already having problem with our labor, labor shortage. So we came back to Malaysia. We, we decided, okay, it has to be autonomous. It has to be, it has to be very efficient. It has to be scalable. And it has to have swarming capabilities. Here's what swarming all about. One operator with a tablet, five drones. You press takeoff. One go there, one go there, one go there, one go there. They, they get the work done. They come back, you just fill up, send it back, send it back, send it back. So, what I'm about to show you is Marie, our second prototype. Uh, we built Marie based on whatever shortcoming that we had with Natalie. And um, we still haven't solved the 200 liter per hectare. So we went and asked the agency, what can we do for this? They said, nothing. This is what the chemical producer have recommended. That is what you have to do. Here's what we did. We went on knocking the Malaysia's largest agricultural chemical company. We knocked their door and said, hey guys, your chemicals are good, but it's not good for the drone. You have to make a diet version of it. So, uh, we went on joint research with them. Uh, this time around, we wanted to get everything right from the spray volume. There are five parameters that we had to work on. Number one was uh, the, the spray pressure. Number two is the nozzle. Number three is the velocity of the, uh, the drone. Uh, number three was the altitude. 
Number five was the, the SWOT. So for the next two months, this is what we did. Meet Marie. So here what we are doing is we are testing all the parameters. In total, we had close to 2,000 different parameters that we had to go through. We wake up 5 in the morning, work all the way until 8 in the night. And this was like continuous for the next two months. The best part about science is you repeat and repeat and repeat to make sure you are, you are right all the time. It's one of the scientific methods that we use. Also, we designed Marie to be a workhorse. Here's what, what I learned from working in Slama. Before this, I was a mat saleh. After the 30 de 33 degrees Celsius, this is what I am. So, uh, this is our chem uh, chemical partners. Uh, they are doing their part of the, the research. Another thing that I would like to add is this girl over here, she doesn't have a remote control. No one controls it. She flies by herself. She gets the work done. And she can work it up to five hours, eight hours a day. So for the, for the two months that we spent in uh, Slama Research Center is we collected data. We wanted to know what is the spray pattern, what is the distribution like, what is the final spray volume going to be? And each day, we collected this much of data. What you're looking at is uh, liquid sensitive paper. And we bring back this, uh, the samples and we analyze. We look for the best uh, parameters, the best optimum parameters for the aerial UAV crop spraying. So now we got, we, we test the entire parameter. We got everything done. Now, uh, at, 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 towards the end of uh, the research, our chemical partner has also come with a new formulation, which was tailored for the drone. It is not something that is concentrated with the... O I mean, it's not the concentrated that the, they were using before this. It was specially tailored for the drone. And, all right, where's the paddy field then? Good people from Department of Agriculture, Bumbung Lima, gave us a plot. They gave us two hectares of land. Uh, at this point, basically, <laughs> I was like, okay, if we could do on par with the existing method, if we get the same yield as the existing method, we are safe. So the good people from DOA, uh, Bumbong Lima, gave us uh, two hectares of land from, uh, from beginning of the plantation, which is seeding, all the way until harvest. So the whole two actors was on us. This is what we did. What you're about to see is Marie working in a real paddy field, producing real rice. And all these are being done without uh, any human interaction, minimal human interaction. Let me tell you something. I was introduced uh, by saying uh, I crash more drones than anyone else. I have record of crashing numbers of drones. This autonomous system had zero crash so far. Inventing something is not just about coming up with great ideas. 
That's the easy part. Inventing something that works, reliable and sellable is what invention is all about. Thank you.